This is going to shock you, it will blow your mind, but 20% of the medical advice we give is probably wrong. Just because we are different from each other. You know, I actually jotted down the quick numbers I was walking in here. The number of patients who fail first time use of drugs, 40% fail depression drugs, 50% fail arthritis drugs, 70% fail Alzheimer's drugs and cancer drugs. I have a whole list of these things. Almost any element you pick, we have high failure rates. And interestingly, this is a problem, of course, for the treatment of, of patients. As a doctor, I try to give you advice, but I have to give it based on how I think everyone responds, knowing that 20% at least of people don't respond. But you as a patient uh, suffer because when I try to figure out what drugs to give you, my, I'm hamstrung. All the trials include people who, for whom we know it won't work, which makes it more difficult to do it. But it's a disruptive technology. Understanding because now you have large drug companies with you know, huge drugs that no, they, it's hard for them to tell who it works on best. Think about this: it's a clinical trial done today, which costs you know, tens of millions of dollars. They're partly expensive because you have to have a lot of patients in them. If you can begin to pick the patients for whom your drug really works well, you can do far fewer people because you distort the statistics on any trial. If you have 20%, or you know you're wasting your time. It, it messes up any assessment you make of whether the drug really works. There are good drugs that never got approved because too many people were resistant to them. What we should insist on in healthcare is better value, not more of it. And that's the big mistake we have made in the West especially. And beginning with a simple sort of genetic testing that immediately isolates the high-risk populations. I so think that's the simple takeaway here. The, the big message is the cost of doing a, a DNA profile has gone from several hundred thousand dollars, being impossible frankly, you know, ten years ago, to now being a thousand dollars. For a thousand dollars, if I know everything about your genome and I can begin to pick out exactly where your weaknesses are and how I can help you through those. Listen, if you have a gene for, or weakness for Alzheimer's, I, I'd rather jump on it early and buy you an extra decade. Because, you know, we're, I do think are going to cure Alzheimer's in the next 10 to 15 years. So if I can stop you from developing advanced disease, even if you start today, then I've allowed science to catch up to you. And this is the exciting part of what medicine offers. The concerning part about medicine and how we think about it is in all the countries where you know, we talk, debate healthcare finance, we think that the capitals of our countries with small, smart legislators and brilliant leaders will fix the healthcare challenges. They're, they're not. It is impossible. You will not balance the healthcare budget in any major country if you don't fight healthcare where it has to be truly won which is not in the Capitol House, uh, right? not in the Senate or the legislature, it's going to be, or the Parliament, it's going to be one in your home. You win healthcare in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in the dining room, that's where you win the healthcare battle.